How'd you like to give away a thousand dollars and get nothing in return? Just give away a thousand dollars, maybe five hundred dollars here, three hundred dollars here, fees excess. Just give it away. I'll take it. I'll tell you why on the other side. Welcome to Investing for Parents. Now, if you're first time here, go ahead and hit the like button. Go ahead and hit the com hit the comments. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. The comments are the most important for me because I learn a lot when I look at comments of other videos. People's comments usually leads to other videos, but usually leads to a thought process. So comments are very important, but make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna hit you with Stuff you've probably heard before, but explained a different way. Now, today we're going to talk about pre-qualification versus pre-approval. Two totally different things, but really the same. Now, when you're going for a mortgage and you're going to try to buy a house, you, and you go to a loan officer, you go to a bank, whatever, and you're like, hey, I want to buy a house. They're like, great. Well, let me check your credit score. Okay, how much money do you make? Okay, uh, do you have alimony? Do you have to pay child support? Do you have student loans? Okay, great. You're pre-qualified for $170,000. You can go buy a house. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's how pre-qualification works. They don't really check anything. It's basically questions that you answer. And whether you're truthful or not, you can still get pre-qualified. They'll check your credit score to make sure. That's like the one thing they always do is check your credit score to make sure they're well, what you owe, what you are not paying, et cetera, your, um, your debt ratio and all that. But they don't really check that stuff in depth. Now, when you go to buy a house, you're just looking through, looking through, you find your house. Then you have to actually submit all the paperwork for the loan and an underwrite has to look at your your papers and say, yeah, he does actually make this amount of money. I see his pay stubs, his W-2s. I see all of that. That's pre-qualification. You are just pre-qualified to then be able to start the process. Now, there's pre-approval. Pre-approval then is more in-depth. It doesn't always go to an underwrite. A lot of people will explain to you that it goes to an underwrite and they're saying, yeah, you know what? We've checked your W-2s. We checked your pay stub. We checked your, 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 everything you gave us. We've checked your credit score. We've checked everything. So now we are checking off that we can give you a letter that says you are pre-approved for this amount. And yeah, when you find that house, the process of this will all be easier. Not really. It's just, it's better because they've gone more in depth. Now, I like to explain to people the biggest difference between pre-qualification and pre-approval is the likelihood of you getting that loan. So getting pre-qualified when you get to the process, there might be a chance you don't get the loan because then they check everything and they're like, no, we can't offer you this. You don't make this amount. Now you have to go back and try to renegotiate. Maybe you have to go find a different house. Now, pre-approval, you know within an area that there's a chance you're going to get the loan. They don't really price you out of the, give you a, like a crazy number. They give you crazy numbers, but not something where they know they may not have a chance. It's just a, it's more checks and balances and pre-approval. And then you get the pre-approved letter that goes to your realtor that says, hey, listen, I can afford this. When you're negotiating on a house, they're like, well, this guy is serious. He's more is further ahead in the process than, than someone that's just pre-qualified because they got to start the actual process now. Now imagine you only got pre-qualified, right? So you got pre-qualified. You see a, a house that's 175000 You want to buy the house. You start the process. You bring in your W-2s, your paychecks, the, the credit, the, everything. They, they're checking your credit score. They're going through the process of it. And while you're submitting that for a loan now, you now have to do inspection of the house. Then they'll order an appraisal of the house. So an appraisal usually costs four to five hundred bucks. Inspection, two to three hundred dollars. So you're telling me you spent eight hundred bucks and then boom, you don't actually get the loan. That is the crazy thing about being about pre-qualification is you may not actually get the loan, but you damn sure are paying for the inspection and the appraisal because those are said to be yours. Those are for the 
what you have, you were paid for. The bank needs this coverage so that you can, they, they, they feel secure enough to give you a, a loan. So you've done all that work. You've handed out damn near a thousand dollars and 20 days down the road. No, your, your loan's been denied. That's the biggest difference in pre-approval. Now, pre-approval, you can still get denied, but the likelihood of it is not very high. So at least we know when you're going through and you're doing appraisals and you're doing inspection, there's a really good chance that you're going to get the house because they've already set a number that you can feel comfortable with. That's the difference between pre-qualification and pre-approval. Always try to get pre-approved. I mean, spend the time to say, listen, I don't want a pre-qualification. There are some people that will give you like a loan officer or a loan broker. They'll give you a pre-approved letter or pre-qualification letter. I don't know, really know the, 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 the way they term it. But there'll be a letter that says you can afford this much, but they'll ask you, how much do you want to pay for the house? But they'll have it in the back of their head how much you can't really go over. Those I don't really like so much. So make sure you get pre-approved. It's just secure for you. Security for you knowing when you are in the process, there's less of a chance that you don't get the loan and you've shelled out $1,000 and you just, that's it. You're out of $1,000. But the beauty, the beauty of it though, you can then use the appraisal that you got. It's go for like three to nine months or something like that, depending on whoever's giving you the loan. The appraisal is good for three to nine months. So you can take that appraisal and go to a different bank, a different loan place, wherever you want to go and take that appraisal with you on that same house and try to qualify there. But you just want to protect yourself just in case it doesn't happen and you're not out of your money. This has been Investing for Parents. I appreciate you guys joining me. Like I said, comment let me know where you're in your investing journey whether it be stocks houses whatever it is whatever you're tackling remember on this channel i go five houses in five years i want you to set your goals too i appreciate you guys like i appreciate you guys comment i appreciate you guys subscribe hope to see you next time